So we're all on lockdown. It's a difficult time for artists, it's a difficult time for everybody. Uh, but what do, what can we do? Well, on the one hand, um, being on lockdown is, is a blessing for artists because it gives us the time to stay at home, to stay in our studios and to create. Certainly in my case, uh, I've been very starved of time, studio time, because I'm always going everywhere, everywhere teaching. Um, so this has been, for me, a, a blessing in that regard, that I can get more done, personal things that I needed to get done. Um, on the other hand, uh, financially, it's uh, very difficult. I know it's difficult for so many people out there. Um, it's difficult because all my teaching classes uh, have had to be cancelled, sadly. Um, and we don't know how long that's going to be either. It could be the, the entire year that they're cancelled. Hopefully not. Hopefully we'll get back up and running. But most of my teaching is done overseas. So the idea of flying overseas at the moment, it's, it's out of the question. So I'm grounded here and I just thought I'd give you a little update on what I am doing. The first thing, and I'm quite excited about this, is I finally got round to completing my third DVD. Um, I actually filmed it all seven years ago. Uh, it's the painting of a, of a jungle scene with a great hornbill in it. And I actually did this seven years ago, but I never ever had the time to edit it. So it just lay there on my computer unedited for all these years. Finally, I've had time to devote to that project and I'm really pleased with it. I've, uh, I've put a lot of work into it and um, it's ready, it's done. And that is, uh, for me, that's very exciting. Hopefully for you too, I'll be releasing it very soon. But again, there's a bit of a snag because of the situation in the world. Um, I can't release it as a DVD uh, because I can't be going to the post office every day shipping out DVDs, it's just not uh, practical. So what I'm intending to do with it, it's all complete, it's all ready to go. Uh, I uploaded it to YouTube, uh, but um, as it's something that I'm going to sell, um, it, it's, it's not uh, public there. Uh, I was intending to uh, distribute it uh, via my website from there, but it turns out that um, distributing videos for sale is a real nightmare <laughs> and YouTube is, is out of the question for that at the moment. Um, if anyone has any experience or knowledge on how to do all this, please let me know in the comments below. Um, but what I'm going to do is release this as a video download from my website. Now, it's a, it's a very high quality video. It's shot in full HD. Um, so that will be great as a download, but the trouble is it's a, it's a huge file. It's 25 gigabytes of data. It's three over three hours long. Um, so again, that I'm running into technical problems with that. Um, I think the solution may be Vimeo or one of the uh, other web hosting providers. As soon as I get that sorted out in the next, not web hosting, the um, video hosting providers, uh, as soon as I get that sorted out, um, I will let everybody know where and when and where we can get this video ready for release, hopefully within, within the next few days. What I'd like to do is just give you a taster of the DVD. Um, as I say, I'm, I'm very pleased with it. I think it's the best one I've done. It's going to be very helpful to pastel artists who want to learn about doing backgrounds uh, and doing foliage and that sort of thing. Um, I think it's a, it's a good one. So it'll be released, as I say, in the next few days. But here uh, is a taster of, of the DVD. I hope you enjoy it. Yeah, for speed, so that I can get this out to you quickly, I'm just going to chop a few segments of the um, DVD series and just stitch them together. So it may look a little bit disjointed, but just bear in mind, it's just 
a few little snippets from the DVD uh, to show you as, uh, as tasters. Making those light beams stand out that little bit more, which is just the way we want them. We want it to be a delicate transition from the colour of the forest to catching the light beams back to the colour of the forest and so on. It is, as I say, quite a delicate operation, perhaps the most delicate part of the whole painting, so it's worth spending a little bit of time on something like this just so that we get the right effect. I talk a lot about balance in a painting and what we're doing here is actually about balance as well. We're balancing the degree of colour that we're going to have in certain areas. Now where the light beams are going through this mist there's not a lot of colour but where the light beams are less pronounced there's more of those greens and blues that are able to penetrate the mist and so that's what we're doing we're just creating that balance just adding those colors putting them back so at first we were quite quite arbitrary we just put the white all over but now we're applying a bit of a bit of fine tuning and a bit of balance You'll also develop a sense for the layering process with pastels. In general, what we do is we lay down a base colour and tone. And what I always try to do is get that as accurate as possible. And then we tweak the colours with other layers and we add detail on top of that layer. And that layering process is something we'll go into in a little bit more detail later on you'll see me using it many times and hopefully that will unlock the door for you to produce some great work of your own accent colors give me control once again it's a tremendous way of having control over the exact hue of your colours. If a green, say, is slightly too blue, we can knock it back with a thin skimming of orange or the other way around. It's all about the ability to be able to minutely adjust and therefore have control over what we're doing. And now as we've built up the values to where we want them to be, now is the time to pick up the pastel sticks that give you richer, stronger colour. They're loaded with pigment and they can be the ones that really make the painting shine. And I save those strokes to the end when I've got all the base work done and everything's in position then I can apply stronger, more powerful strokes. So in the end, people just see mostly those final strokes, but they don't realize everything that went on before in establishing the tonal values and the colors, the subtle shades that lie underneath those strokes. That's the important thing.
And so, if there ever was to be such a thing as a basic formula for pastels, that would be it. A bass tone that's the right tonal and colour value, followed by some shadow tones to make the structure and the shape, and then adding some highlights for the opposite end of the scale to show where the light is hitting, and then some accent colour over the top of that. And now getting back to the hornbill, which has almost become lost in some of the pastel all around it. So you notice here I'm just taking a paintbrush, a bristle paintbrush, and just cleaning up some of the surface before I apply a new layer of pastel. And now we move to the cliffs on the left hand side of the painting. Much the same process as we did over on the right hand side. Just a balancing act really. I mean you've got to establish the topography and the, the actual shape of the stonework. But not just that, you've got to throw it back with atmospherics all the time, managing it. And at the same time also managing the level of uh, sharp detail whether the you know it's too sharp or too soft we've just got to get that balance just exactly right that's why the
I take my time when it comes to the final highlight strokes. This is real-time footage, not speeded up, just exactly as I did it here. Just to show you, it's, it's measured, it's... Each mark I make here is going to be a final mark that will be clearly seen in the finished painting as it's been laid down. So I take it easy, I take it slow, I think about each stroke that I'm doing and make sure that I make every stroke count. There's no rushing goes on at a stage like this. You concentrate on these micro details and then every few minutes you step back and you take in the entirety of what you're doing. It's always important to look at the painting as a whole, assess it and then get back to the details that you're doing. When one bush is completed, we move around to the next section and complete that one. One thing was bothering me a little bit. It was that branch at the top right where the bird was perched. I didn't like the way it was too straight at angle. So here I am just sort of changing it and notice once again why it's a good idea to do things very gently at first. I'm completely changing this branch now and just, if you notice, I just put some more background colour over where the branch used to be in the top right there. And I'm arcing the branch down. Uh, I think the curved shape will be much more interesting and then all I have to do is think of some interesting foliage to be uh, around that branch which will become a bit of a foreground feature, that was my idea so that the eye can then go from the splendour and the detail of all these foreground features and then looking into the distance and that sense of depth will be what makes the picture more interesting and adds to its beauty. I'm just freehand drawing from my imagination at this point. I was just putting in some large leaves to the right of the hornbill which I later uh, changed and made them a little bit smaller. And what I'm trying to do here is just put a little bit more of myself into this picture. It's all very well having good photographic references to work from. Visual art is all about communication and realism is only one aspect of communication. You need to put more in, put some of your own creativity into your work and you will communicate to others how you feel about this painting and that will make your art a lot more appealing. Always try to be an artist who seeks to communicate a genuine emotion rather than one who seeks to impress by technical prowess. those warmer accent colours going in. All the branches and all the trees in this entire painting were done in this way, with that greyish base tone, then some drawing of some shapes, one or two highlights, and some warm accent colours thrown in over the top, just to give it that nice colour scheme. Thank you. 
And also, if you noticed, I just put a little bit of a red glow around the branch. That's just a little trick, really, just to just to make it pop out a little bit. Just a fine wash of the red. Quite effective, really. Let's just take a moment to have a look at some pastels. I'll show you the pastels that I prefer to use and we'll talk a little bit about sharpening. Very, very important aspect of pastel painting, which everybody overlooks. But sharpening is key to so many things. So let's dive straight in. You just put the pastel pencil in like this and then nice sound you know you've got a beautiful beautiful sharp edge and that my friends is what we need for pasteling sometimes i also take a blade and just manipulate the edge to make it more of a more of an edge more of a chisel edge on a very minute scale if I'm doing something like uh, whiskers and things but that is beautiful and let me see that is not most people that I teach they do everything with a pencil that looks like that not good more shadowing going in. It's an incredibly light touch that's needed here. These are white feathers, of course. So these colors have to be very, very subtle. Nothing too drastic, nothing too sharp. Just very, very subtle colors that will then enable the final white strokes to stand out very clearly. It's definitely a fine balancing act this bit on the tail because we also need to get a little bit of that cross hatching effect just to show the structure of the feather it's all got to come together at some point so that it'll just look right and the pure white just to finish those edges it's the Faber Castell pure white pastel square stick very very beautiful white that is it very makes a very very bright line and don't forget to notice how sharp it was And having got those bushes where I wanted them to be, it's time to zoom out and take a look at the picture as a whole and to assess everything together once again. And what I decided here was I needed a little bit more uh, of some atmosphere going in to the picture now, just to bring the foreground bushes and the hornbill further into the foreground. So this just sets the background back a little and what I'm going to do now is work down towards the bottom of the painting that bottom right area that needs attention notice how I'm deliberately making things a little bit scruffy here I don't want it to look too perfect. 
It's a very important thing to keep in your mind that when you're painting anything that's organic, don't make it too neat and tidy. The more scruffy you make it, the more organic and natural it'll look. very soon via my website ericwilsonsart.com. It will be released uh, for immediate viewing. I don't think as a download because people are not going to want um, 25 gigabytes of data to download and, and have on their hard drive. So I think it'll probably go through some someone like Vimeo and be available to um, view instantly from there. So. I think uh, I think it'll be good and um, hopefully you'll enjoy it and now I can uh, once I get that sorted out then it's time to return to him get him done um, which I am filming as well which I'll put quite a bit of that on YouTube um, apart from that I'm just continuing to impersonate Father Christmas and um, yeah, we're locked down, isn't it? I can't go to the barbers. I can't. <laughs> I might as well just become the wild man of Borneo. Why not? Anyway, till next time. <laughs>